if I find the character inspiring and I want to play her, it's not a cerebral uh, process to me. I know that I want to play this person and they interest me and excite me, or I don't. Um, I don't think about it too much. So, yeah, I feel pretty, pretty open in that way. I'm actually very, um, I think in, my life is actually very quiet. I don't go to places in life, obviously, that I go to when I'm acting. Um, I don't want to play myself. I want to play people I don't understand necessarily, and I don't know, and I want to somehow come to know them and understand them and communicate who the, what that person's life is. And um, I just care a lot more about people that we tend to sort of put in a box and label and move off somewhere because we don't want to look at them and we don't want to know them and we want to have a, you know, some kind of idea of who they are without understanding it. And those are the people that that I, I don't know, I care about because I don't, I don't like that, that we do that. And so, um, and because I don't understand it and I, I want to. Um, and probably because I've lived, my life has been fairly, fairly quiet. Um, that's what I like. I'm very kind of, I'm not comfortable in, you know, public situations and stuff like that as me. So of course, when I act, it's where I, I'm not self-conscious and I'm, um, I feel uh, much, I don't censor myself at all when I'm acting and I do in life all the time. Um, so I'm up, uh, characters appeal to me that are very different from me in that way. Have you had people say to you, would you please do just one more Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Um, well, not exactly that, but yeah, I've had people um, say, don't you want to do a big commercial movie? And the thing is, nobody ever knows what's going to be a big commercial movie, you know. So, and if you try to do that, you're, usually you'll make crap, you know, I think. So I think you just got to go with what you love and what appeals to you and what excites you um, and uh, if it's commercial great I mean it's not like I'm a I'm against the movie doing well <laughs> you know the movie that I was in do well I, I'd be really pleased but isn't it really kind of a matter here and it's not there? the motivating factor no because if you have no control over that and uh, you know if you can be proud of a movie that you're in if you like it then that's a great a great feeling you know Oh, I just laugh, because when I was a kid, you know, I, I remember people saying that I would do this thing, and, uh, yeah, it's just I, I didn't, I didn't verbalize things, you know, I was shy, and I was introverted, and so when I got angry about something, I wouldn't say I'm angry, I wouldn't throw a fit, I wouldn't throw a tantrum, I would just, um, I guess, like, have this death look, and, uh, yeah, and I, I felt very powerful, you know, the way kids can feel. And there was this one teacher who was very, I don't know, very nasty to me one day when I was six years old. And I looked at her that way thinking, die, 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 <laughs> die. And then she died. And I felt really bad about it. <laughs> and I always felt that it was somehow I was responsible, you know. So that kind of cured me of that. Well, I was going to ask you to recreate the death look, but now I don't know oh, if I, I want can, to. Oh, I can't, I can't. Yeah. No, it is, you know how kids are, they really feel responsible for everything that happens in the world? Oh, there were a lot of people, you know. I mean, I think when I was 14, I saw Dog Day Afternoon, I don't know, 17 times or something. So it, it had a big impact on me. And, uh, I'm, I mean, obviously Meryl Streep, um, Jessica Lange, and De Niro and Keitel and Duvall, I mean, Hackman, you know. You know, I sort of grew up reading her screenplays, and um, she just, she's informed probably every part of how I, how I work, just by watching her. Um, she's so in incredibly committed. Um, she absolutely does not compromise in going for, she always goes for what's true. And, um, does, I mean, she makes my research look like nothing, you know, look like kindergarten. She's so thorough, and, um, She's, uh, she's just a, a really remarkable woman and really brilliant and I've always wanted to work with her and I've always wanted to, to play a character that she's written to be able to say those words. She's just such a great writer. So, you know, and she's my mom. <laughs> kind of like it's this great thing and, you know, she, so yeah, she wrote this, just this beautiful, beautiful film 
it was just a great gift for me and the fact that we were able to get it made it was kind of a little miracle you know you know i know there are certain areas of your life which are off limits and i respect that so i'm curious <laughs> but no no no, no, no. <laughs> I, I would like to know um why they're off limits uh nobody's business something you don't want to deal with um too hard to talk about i think it's um, primarily it's uh nobody's business and something i don't want to talk about publicly um i think like everybody their subjects they feel fine talking about and, and ones that they are not for me and everybody's different because there's some people who just you know will talk about anything and they're great and they make a great interview and um sometimes they get a little uncomfortable listening though i have to say because i think god that's private you know and i don't want to know I, I don't like to know too much about actors, actually, because um, I like to be able to go to the movie and not know too much so that I can believe that they're the character that they're playing, you know? Um, and also, you just think if somebody's talking about how much in love they are, and then three years later, you know, whatever, yeah. they get divorced or something like that, and you just feel bad, you know? And um, I don't know, I just think some stuff should be private and can be, because it's up to you whether you talk about it or not and for me i just don't there's stuff that feels like yeah it is private it's mine and i don't want to you know i'm not selling that i just met her because i'm so much more like Catherine than the films that i've done you know i've always sort of played characters that are very very far removed from me and Catherine is much closer to me and so i knew that if i could just sit down with her and talk with her that she would see that I'm really, I'm an actress, <laughs> that I'm really nothing like the, you know, the characters that she had liked in, in the movies, but that she thought made her think I was so unright for this. You know, a lot of the way Catherine sees herself is how she's mirrored by others. Of course, her mother was a real beauty, or was thought of as a real beauty anyway. Her father makes her feel like she has no beauty, has no grace, has no wit, has no intelligence really. But when she falls in love, she suddenly blooms. She feels beautiful and she's in love. Women of a certain means, women of money, could not dress themselves. Everything was laced from the back, buttoned from the back. And if you just think about that, even for a few minutes, to really think about not being able to dress yourself. I mean, you just had no freedom. You had no independence. It was incredibly uncomfortable. Women's lungs would be punctured by their ribs because of where the corset laced. The tightest part of the corset is at your floating ribs. The tightest... Okay, well, obviously I can't tell you anything about the movie, but I will say it is really like going through the looking glass when you work with him because you enter a world without time. Time just fades. It has no meaning. He's incredibly gentle, he can be incredibly open, and he can also be incredibly specific. It just depends. He knows what he wants. They're all very different. They all look different. They all, you know, live differently. They're very different. They're all sort of misfits for whatever reason. The reasons are different. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're characters that I'm certainly drawn to and attracted to. And Hmm, there's people that I, I care about, you know. I don't feel they're responsible for crimes that are committed that are inspired by seeing a movie. I think that the person that commits the crime is in trouble in the first place, you know. So I don't, or same thing with a record. I don't think a record is responsible for someone killing somebody else. I really don't believe that. But I do think they can change your life. Do you know what actually happened with that was it was made for Turner Network Television. Turner, that book is one of the great books. I mean, I really was an ardent fan of, of that novel and uh, so just wanted to be a part of it. And it was being made for television, which I always thought was kind of a shame. But Angelica wanted to make it and make it very honestly, and she did. And then Turner saw it and decided they didn't want to air it because it was too explicit. And they didn't like the subject matter. <laughs> So it was kind of ludicrous, the whole thing. But the nice thing is that they're not saying, we own it, we're shelving it. They're saying, you want to, we'll give it to you to release as a feature. So now it's, you know, Angelica's trying to uh, get distribution. And I think she has, 
but I don't know all the details, and I think they're still in negotiation with Turner about it. But I think it's kind of the best thing possible happening with it. I wish it had been made as a feature in the first place, actually. Yeah, but see, the kind of films that I do are not, they don't have to go by those guidelines that are typical of Hollywood films. And so, yeah, I've been, I've been kind of released, been released of that because I'm not, those aren't the kind of movies that I've been making. So I've been, I haven't had to do that that much. This was kind of shocking in that way. It was a, a great experience for me. Producing is hard. It's not something that's natural to me. I'm not a natural pitcher, but I really cared about the movie and I wanted to get it made. The fact that we got it made to me is still a miracle. It's a movie that I love. I'm really proud of it. It was really well received. It's not, it was never intended to be, in my mind, I never thought, oh, this movie's going to make money. I, you know, that wasn't, to me, it was just, can we make it, you know, and can we make something that we want to make that is uncompromised, and we did. So, for me, it's like a huge, huge, huge success, you know. <laughs> I don't know how Miramax feels, but I'm just flying from it. So, that's the thing. I mean, I never really care about whether something makes money or not. And we just now got the soundtrack released, finally, so... I think I probably am happiest when I'm working. I really love it so much. But real life isn't dull. I like dull things. I mean, I <laughs> I like going on a hike with my dogs. That makes me really happy. I like reading. I like seeing my friends. Because I have friends that I've had since I was two, you know, because I grew up in L.A. But I, it's pretty quiet. But I like it. That makes, me, that makes me very happy. And working makes me incredibly happy. But it's sort of a nice balance. For me, what's lucky is I have been able to keep my private life private. The roles that I play, um, I'm playing a part, you know, and so it's, it's that character, and I would do everything I can to help the movie, even though press is difficult for me. It's not something that comes naturally. It's very weird to talk about yourself. It just is, especially on radio. I mean, I thought if I heard this, I would be so horrified, I'm sure. It always has been, yeah, because it's a way to come out of yourself and to communicate something, but without sort of saying, this is me, you know, and so it's a way to be very free and unselfconscious, whereas in just everyday kind of life, I'm very self-conscious. Every sentence I say, I'm thinking, ah, no, bad, you know, so it's acting as a way to really get beyond all of that, and so it's, it's nice for me. I think everybody sort of works best with great directors, <laughs> but I like directors that that have a lot of trust in you and and that you feel very free with and feel like you can explore character and that you're safe so that you can sort of go out on a limb and if you do something ridiculous that they will catch you and save you in a way and it will also guide you. So I like a lot of openness. I like a lot of... I like to be able to bring things in or, and, and bring ideas in, you know, like Altman, will, he's the ultimate at that, you know, you have ultimate sort of freedom. But I also love like Uli Edel who did Last Exit to Brooklyn who's very, very specific, you know, I mean to the point of you're touching your mouth the way a middle class girl would touch your mouth, you know, use the back of your hand rather than your pinky finger, you know, something like that where it was that specific but because he was really coming from a place that was accurate. I loved it, you know, and I was grateful. I mean, none of us know everything, and so I think it's really good to be open, and you know, so I guess that's what I like. He's, like, such a lovely man and so funny and really, really charming. So I actually met Albert Finney when I was really little. I mean, I was six years old, and... I think I just seen Tom Jones. I know that sounds crazy, but I really think I had. And we were in Paris, and we were going up in the elevator at this hotel we were at, and there he was. You know, there was Tom Jones in the elevator. And for me, he was just like the most handsome man on the planet. And he patted my head, and he said, what a beautiful child. And I was so in love, you know. And then I get to, like, work with the guy, <laughs> and he gets to play my dad. How great. And so the first day that we met, I said, you know, 
actually we have met before. <laughs> you probably wouldn't remember, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's lovely. He's lovely. He has he used to say the funniest thing. I mean, it, to me, it just would crack me up where he'd say like, "Okay, Albert. Well, I hope you have a really good day off tomorrow. So you have a day off, and and I'll, and I'll see you the next day." And he would say, "It's what I live for." <laughs> You know, and just like these things that were exactly like the father, just so cutting but so funny. So now every once in a while when someone says something to me, I'll say, yes, yeah, what I live for. And think of Albert. I like it. You know, I think um, I think that's, that's, that's a very hard movie to do from a book because the book encompasses so much and there's so many characters that you couldn't really follow as much, but I think that, you know, Jessica and Michelle are amazing, amazing in it, and um, I was happy to be a part of, a part of that, you know, and getting to work with Jason Robards, too, was um, great for me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's like, you get a great review, and it makes you feel so good, and you kind of walk on air for a little bit, and then, by accident, <laughs> you read one that said something horrific like that, and uh, it kind of takes you down for a little while, you know, and, and makes you feel bad. And so, yeah, you definitely get affected. I mean, I definitely get affected. I, I don't write it off and go, oh, pff, fuck about, oops. But, um, sorry. But, yeah, it does. It hurts your feelings, of course, you know. But the good ones make you feel really good, so it kind of balances out, hopefully. I saw The Heiress like 10 years ago, the film, the Wyler film, and I loved it so much. And and then I heard that they were doing Washington Square, which is what The Heiress, of course, was based on. And uh, so I, I just really pursued it. I loved the novel. I loved the movie. When I read the novel, which was after I'd seen the movie, I realized how very different it was from the film and then learned that this film was going to try to be closer to the novel. In fact, so I yeah I met with Agnieszka and sort of pleaded and begged and uh, she said okay and, <laughs> and that's that's it. It helped me a lot think of myself as this character, you know, and also a lot of the way people look is the way that they feel about themselves. I think, you know, you can do a lot with lighting, you can do a lot with camera angles and. No one wore makeup in that period. I mean, makeup wasn't worn by women because makeup was worn by prostitutes. And so you really weren't allowed to wear makeup at all. And there are all these books, actually, that I read that taught women how to cheat makeup to cover a blemish so that it could not be detected. But they all emphasize that if it can be detected, <laughs> you mustn't wear it. <laughs> and uh, so it's interesting things like that, you know. I loved it, you know. I really did. I mean, I I really understand Catherine's shyness because I'm shy and I understand her awkwardness and her feelings of being so inarticulate. I <laughs> it's hard for her to express herself. And so all of that all of that stuff about her, I really do understand in a way. So for me, I I enjoyed that and I I'm very kind of quiet in life and stuff and remove, I mean, just, I can disappear very easily in a room full of people. And so that was, um, that wasn't so hard for me to do. Tough. I've been wanting to work with Cronenberg for so long. And then I auditioned for this play and I had such a good time just preparing for it. My callback was on a stage in the city, so that was so exciting for me. I met my little sister after my call back, and I said, you know what, even if I don't get it, I had so much fun today. It was such a great experience to just be on the stage. It's such a fun play, and I really would love to do it. But I sort of got to do it for the hour I was auditioning. And then I got it, so I was thrilled. And then the money for the Cronenberg movie finally came into place, and so I can't do it. That's always the way. You have this long dormant period where you start to go crazy and get all anxious, and you're never going to work, and then... You end up getting a great job, and then you end up having to sacrifice a great job. I'm fine for about a three-month period. 
And then after that, I started to get anxious. The past couple of years, I've been very fortunate in doing projects that I believe in, projects that are movies that I would actually want to go see. And that's important to me, and I don't want that to end. So after about three months, sometimes I get nervous. Firstly, I loved The Heiress. And I saw it about 10 years ago, but I really, really loved it. And when I found out they were making a film of Washington Square, and that Washington Square was actually what The Heiress was based on, I read the novel, which I really fell in love with. I've never played anyone like Catherine Slocher, and she's actually a lot closer to me than a lot of the characters that I have played. So I was excited about that opportunity to explore playing someone closer to home. I'm someone that actually does feel rather inarticulate and feels socially very awkward. I'm shy. I'm not comfortable in social situations. And her skin was not so hard for me to slip into. We certainly all have experienced falling in love and how powerful that is and how it makes you come out of yourself and makes you feel the ground suddenly solid beneath your feet. And we've all experienced the wipeout when your heart's broken and you feel like you'll never recover. And yet you do go on. And what I love about this, which is close to the novel, is that she doesn't become this sort of embittered, cold, harsh person like she does in The Heiress. She's just able to see people for who they are and accept herself and her silence as a strength rather than as an awkward weakness. You know, I think acting as a kid was a way for me to come out of myself. I didn't want to say, I feel this about this as me, but when I was acting, I could say whatever I wanted, whether I believed it or I didn't believe it, and I could say it with tremendous force. As a child, it really was a way of reaching out and making friends and being a part of whatever, my kindergarten or my first grade or my second grade, that was my way of making friends. And it was my way of coming out of myself and being more extroverted. When I was acting, I really felt very free and not self-conscious at all. I think that's why I love it so much. We were working in really hard conditions, long, long days in about 110 degree heat. And we'd be doing scenes where we'd be dripping sweat <laughs> on our faces. He could always make a joke about something and always cheer everybody up and so nice to everybody. Maggie Smith would make me laugh so hard I would just start crying. She's so funny. Everybody had a really good sense of humor and they worked just incredibly long hours and never complained at all. And they're so brilliant. It was thrilling. It was really exciting. I mean, just to be able to walk on a set and see his name on a chair and know that you had a right to be there is pretty great. He's really gentle, and it's kind of like entering a really wonderful world. He's very open. You can ask him anything about anything, and he'll tell you. I really cherish that experience. I didn't get to work with Nicole, unfortunately. I'm like, that was with Tom. He's amazing to work with. He's really generous and funny and nice to everybody and really includes everybody and everything. He makes you comfortable with him immediately. He could teach lessons on how to make people feel easy. He's that generous and that friendly. And it's genuine. I don't know what, but definitely I'd love to work with her again. I love her. She's my mom. But she really is truly a brilliant woman and a great, great writer. I mean, there's not a comma in that movie that's improvised. So she's quite brilliant. Oh, I understand you're a, a Mac addict. Yes, so, I am. <laughs> with a, is your love of computers and technology, was that a factor? In yeah. The Absolutely. It's kind of a new passion for me, and uh, I do mostly graphics. Um, so, of course, Mac is the perfect computer. And, uh, yeah, I do a lot of Photoshop, and I have digital cameras and scanner and um, Illustrator and Quark I use a lot, too, and Painter. And I just love it. So, yeah, I can lose myself for hours upon hours upon hours, you know, doing a collage or something, and, uh, and I've lost things that I've worked days on. I never backed it up or saved it. And uh, so I know what that feels like. So when I read the script, the idea that she's a game designer fascinated me and that, you know, it's, it, that she's created this, like, genius, genius game and there's only one and it could be damaged. I immediately <laughs> really identified with that. And uh, the concept that you, games in the future where you port them into your spine um, was so out there and sort of gruesome, but... You know, you can imagine it. Well, do you think that could happen? Do you think gaming will change 
It seems like it can't happen on a certain level. But on another level, when you see, I don't know, I guess it was like probably Macworld I was reading. No, it wasn't Macworld. It was Wired. And there's an ad for something. And it says this, ad, this has not been Photoshopped. And it's this guy with all these things that he has implanted in his body, like spikes and just he's using his body as like an art art piece where people do, and people do put things foreign matter into their bodies all the time, you know, and I think um, the idea of the computer and the body becoming closer and closer is something that's already sort of happened, um, but it just hasn't been to play a game. Right. Well, if this does happen, if this does come about, and we are able to download adventures into our minds, right. what do you think it would do to acting and to the That's curious. I uh, yeah, have no idea, yeah. I think I forgot that virtual where you were sort of having the experience of, yeah, it's interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> we're all going to be out of work. Um. Well, one aspect of the movie that I really enjoyed, um, it had just this, the feeling. The, the feeling was very strange and dreamlike and kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and I talking to David Cronberg yesterday, he was such a gentle man and not creepy in any way. Yeah. Way. I wonder what the set was like and how you guys were It's like to... that. It was like so easygoing and fun and, yeah, he's so lovely and gentle and and easygoing that that's, that, that is what the whole set is like. And, uh, yeah, it was a great place to be and everybody loves, everybody loves me. He's worked with the same people for years and years and years, you know, and he's, He's doing what he loves, you know, and he's a great filmmaker, so what's to be unhappy about?